Good evening. This is Dr. Kenton Slaybaugh again. And the last four lessons were things that as individuals we bring to the cell group or to the congregation, uh, ways of ministering one to another, uh, where it says in 1 Corinthians 14, uh, that each of you, that means all of us, have a part to play in the meeting. It's not just the leader, but it's all of us. And I want to transition a little bit into another eight lessons of principles for cell life. And what I mean by cell life is not only in the meeting, but outside of the meeting. Uh, a cell is more like a family than it is like a meeting. And that means that there are certain things that we can do to help our relationships. The first of these uh, I entitle, Come Ready to Serve. And so as an icebreaker, I would like to know if you have had a situation or an experience where someone served you, where probably unexpectedly did something kind for you, did something that really helped you out, uh, didn't necessarily ask for anything in return, but simply served you as an individual. And so if you would tell the situation, uh, if you have one, uh, amongst yourselves. And so take a moment to do that. Uh, you can press pause on the video and uh, then we'll come back. Galatians 5.13 says this, For you, brethren, have been called to liberty or freedom. Only do not use your liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. That's serving one another that can be hard because it, in, it requires that we are in relationship with one another. But this principle should characterize every aspect of your life together as a cell. You might want to cook a meal for a family that is going through a hard time. You might want to type out a schedule for the group. It might mean hosting the group at times. You might want to clean up after an outreach event. It can be many different things in the way that you help the cell and help the cell meeting. It doesn't all have to be revolving around the meeting. Sometimes people just need a visit. And so you go and you listen. But this is the heart of who we are as believers. Jesus called us to serve one another. And so we want to do that. We want to serve each other as members of this group. Successful groups are made up of people who are more concerned about the needs of others than they are about their own needs. They want to look to the interest of others rather than just the interest of themselves. And so serving one another is a primary ministry of the cell. So some questions. What keeps us from getting involved in the lives of other people? People can be hard. People can be messy. People don't always appreciate what we do for them. Sometimes people betray us. Sometimes they take advantage of us. And so we want to minimize those things. But we don't want to let that hinder us or keep us from serving one another. So what has been your experience in serving one another in the past? How have you served others and what has the experience been? Was it positive? Was it negative? In a moment, you can discuss these things as you move into ministry time. But a second question, how can, we, how can we serve others without being taken advantage of? What are appropriate boundaries? Appropriate boundaries for time, because your time is valuable. Appropriate value, boundaries for resources, because we only have limited amounts of money or other resources. Here's some things to keep in mind. When you're sympathetic to someone, it's like you're calling down into the pit that they may find themselves in or the crisis or the circumstance and you're saying, hey, how are you doing? You're having sympathy. You may not do anything, but you're at least expressing sympathy. But another way that we respond sometimes is what I would call an over-identification. We crawl down into the pit that they're in with them and we feel like, well, we have to experience the same thing that they're going through in order to know how they're feeling in order to minister. And that's not necessarily the case. But a third way is what I would call empathy. And that is you're taking your hand or your arm and you're reaching down into the pit and you're saying, how can I help you out? What can I do to help alleviate or make your load lighter? How can I minister to you? It may be in prayer. 
It may be in serving them in some way that is tangible, like a meal or like listening or whatever, but you actually help them through the situation and walk with them through it. And it takes time and it takes energy and it takes a commitment to people. But when you do that, you show real love. What are you willing to do right now, today, this evening, for someone in your group? Maybe for someone that you know. When you serve others that are outside of the group, it provides a great opportunity for ministry and for inviting them into your group, for inviting them to receive Jesus as your Savior as you continue to build that relationship. People are not used to being served. They're used to simply having to do everything themselves and going their own way. And when we as believers show a different way, when we show that we're concerned about them, that we care about them, and it's more than just words, but we're willing to put actions behind the words, people feel loved and they feel accepted and they feel honored as people. What's your gifting? What are you called to do? Some of us are gifted to serve others through the gift of helps and we, it becomes very natural to do something for someone else. Some of, the, some of us are called to intercede and we serve others by praying for one another. Some of us are called to, to do music or to do other kinds of, of ministries and we serve the body through our gifting. And so what are you gifted to do? We can look at that in future lessons. Another thing to keep in mind is boundaries because we don't want to be taken advantage of. We don't want to be manipulated. We don't want to put ourselves out there only to be betrayed. And that is important. And one of the things I would encourage us to do is sometimes when people realize that you're willing to serve them, they will take advantage of you. And I would encourage you to say no. Just say, that's not what I'm about, or you can't do that. And that's okay to do that. So for ministry time tonight, I want you to pray into situations that were brought out in this discussion. Take the questions I've just given you, begin to discuss them, see where the Holy Spirit wants to take the discussion. And pray for people who are currently serving in ministry, and maybe it's not a formal ministry so much as it's an interaction that you're having with another individual uh, around your, where you live or at your workplace, and you're ministering to them, you're serving them, how is it going? But then pray for those people that are ministering, pray for those people that are serving, and make a commitment tonight that sometime this week or between now and the next cell meeting that you're going to serve others. Thank you for listening. Now go and discuss and minister one to another.